and I was planning to travel more, but you know, COVID-19 came and spoiled my market. So, hey guys, it's Issy, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about what I did during my gap year, what I got up to, and you know, how this actually improved my medical application. So I hope that this will give you an idea of sort of what to do if you're looking for experience, to give you more insight into the life of a doctor and to help you you know sort of improve and make a stronger medical application for those of you who are new to my channel i'm starting warwick's graduate medical school in september and i started this channel to document my journey through medicine so if you like what you're hearing don't forget to like subscribe and turn your notifications on so you know my new videos are dropping comment below if you have any questions about something i said in the video and if you have anything that you want me to talk about in my future videos. I've had quite a few questions about what I did during my gap year and the kind of work experience I have. I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail. I have mentioned it briefly in my previous videos, but I felt like, you know, I should talk about it a little more. Up until a month ago, I was spending my gap year working at a forensic mental health hospital as an occupational therapy support worker. So basically in my role, I was supporting the occupational therapists and I was in a team of occupational therapists, practitioners and support workers. And in my role, I sort of, you know, you know, was motivating patients to re-engage in meaningful activities. This was things such as cooking, gardening, artwork, helping the occupational therapists in their, you know, sessions such as goal setting and problem solving. A lot of my role was, you know, observing the patient, supporting them, motivating them, getting them to come to these sessions because, you know, you know, patients with mental health issues, mo motivation is like, you know, it's a big thing. It's something that's quite difficult for them. So part of my role is to motivate them and get them to engage while supporting the occupational therapists. So yeah, that was my role. I really enjoyed working there and um, I had a great team and yeah, and I really built really great relationships with the patients. And, you know, I got a feel of working in a team, not just with occupational therapists, but you know, on the wards as well with nurses and things like that. Working at a um, secure forensic mental health setting was, valuable it taught me so many valuable things especially with it being my first full-time job like contracted job honestly like i learned so much i developed my skills in how to communicate with people like working in a team there was like a lot of different it was a multidisciplinary team so there was a lot of different departments and stuff so i learned how to like navigate my way through that whilst being in my team and communicating with nurses and support workers on the ward. I also learned how to, you know, communicating with patients with mental health issues. That was a big one. That's something that had a massive development and I feel that would really, really help me in the future whilst being on placements and working as a doctor because, you know, you're going to be meeting people and meeting patients with all sorts of diagnosis, people with all sorts of, from all sorts of backgrounds. Another, that like, one massive thing for me was working that was seeing patients past their diagnosis, getting to know patients past their diagnosis. Like that was a massive, massive lesson for me. And yeah, that is something so valuable that I will take with me. And these were things that I could talk about in my interview. I learned so much from there that when I had an interview, I did not really struggle to come up with answers because there was so much for me to talk about. And in the future as well, I'll always have these lessons that I have with me. When you do get experience, you have more to talk about, especially as a gap year student, you have all that time before your interviews where you've worked and stuff. So you won't be short of experiences and things like that. Trust me, like you will not. Um, just because of how much you would have worked by the time it got up to interview time, that's when you can, you know, kind of show off your experience and stuff. I guess that's the advantage of taking a gap year is that you have more time to work and more time to get valuable 
experience. That was what I spent my year doing and I'm not working anymore because I just wanted a bit of a break before I start medical school in a couple of weeks. When I was applying to medicine, I was also working and this is something I didn't think about beforehand, but yeah, I realized that, you know, I was balancing my time between writing my personal statement and, you know, revising for UCAT whilst also working full time. You know, it was a bit difficult, but I just had to like make myself a schedule and made sure that I was giving myself breaks. So I would come back from work and I would do like a couple of hours on my application and then, you know, that would be it. But I tried to leave my weekends blank because I just needed like my brain to have a rest from working and from doing, you know, my application. But to be honest, there were some times where I'd come back from work and I'd be completely knackered and I'd do nothing. So sometimes I'd spend a bit of my weekend doing my application. So if you are applying to medicine whilst working, just make sure that you're, you know, planning your time, juggling your time around your shifts and yeah, give yourself well-deserved breaks. During my gap year, I also had interviews whilst working. And <laughs> to be honest, I just remember that week where I had two interviews. So I had an interview with the University of Birmingham in November in the same week. And then two days later, I think it was two or three days later, I then had an interview with Gadget Entry Medicine at Warwick. And I did work between those um, interviews as well. So yeah, I think it's very important that you plan your time around preparing for interviews. I recommend looking back, yeah, definitely preparing before I'd got the interview emails, but I didn't prepare until I got the interview emails. And they, gave, they sent me an email approximately two weeks before I had the interview. But yeah, I just remember being it being quite the week. In February, I had an interview with Southampton for graduate entry medicine. And to be honest, that was quite difficult at the time because I was working and by that time, my brain had already switched off from interviews. Like literally after I'd done the interviews in November, I was thinking, okay, yeah, that's it. And I wasn't really expecting um, to get an interview from Southampton. So when I did, I was delighted, but also very surprised. Yeah, again, I had to balance my time between working and preparing for the interview. And then a couple of weeks later, I got an offer from Warwick. I applied for this job around May, June, towards the end of my degree. At this point, I knew that I was reapplying for medicine and that I was taking a gap year. So I wanted something that was worthwhile, something that would give me experience that would prepare me for the future to be a doctor and something that would help towards my application. I had already had some experience in Exeter working as a healthcare assistant on the staff bank, but I wanted more experience. And also I wanted to apply to the University of Warwick, which required 70 hours of work experience from two different places. So I knew that I'd had the hours required from, you know, working as a healthcare assistant, but I needed something more to also, you know, help boost the application for the other unis that would require work experience. So how did I go about applying for my role? When I was looking for jobs at the end of uni, I was looking for mostly healthcare assistant jobs, hands-on experience. So I sent in a load of applications on, I think it must have been through Indeed, maybe? But I just remember applying through to some like care homes through there. And then I was also on the NHS website looking at band two slash band three jobs and healthcare assistant jobs. I came across this band three job, um, which was the occupational therapy support worker job on this website. And I had a look at the you know, the description and I was 
so so interested immediately because I'd worked in like a general hospital setting but I'd never worked in like a mental health setting so I sent in an application did the personal statement for it I also applied for um, a healthcare assistant job at the time the thing is with applying for experience you have to send in quite a few applications because a lot of the time these um, jobs are, are quite competitive and there are a lot of people applying for them so you know just send in a lot of applications to different places and hopefully one shall hit yeah i got an interview for the job and i got the job make sure that with the interviews you're well prepared make sure that you're doing as much as you can to maximize your chances of getting these roles these healthcare roles because they want to see that you can they want to see who you are they want to see that you can do the job that you can be caring that you are empathetic that you can work in a team so you know you need to display that you have these skills in terms of work experience and working in your gap year you should i guess i suggest looking for you know hands-on experience that like, this is things such as working as a healthcare assistant working in the community volunteering at a hospice or a hospital so like like things that would you know that would enable you to care for people that have healthcare needs to look after people um working in a team in a healthcare setting those sort of things so things that would help you learn about yourself give you more skills and give you insights into you know the role of a doctor in the nhs if you can get an nhs job that's great if you can't work in the community and working or volunteering at hospice or hospital that's fine too so when you're looking for work experience for medicine or something to do during the year i'd say just like be sort of ruthless in how you go about looking for experience whether that's using your contacts or emailing your you know local nhs or emailing your gp or going to your gp uh, practice in person to see what you can get whether you can get a bit of shadowing calling up hospitals to see whether they have any jobs available or any jobs coming sometimes it can be quite hard to like when you can't see stuff on websites and things but if you go out of your way to email people call people um you may be more likely to find something and hit something in my gap year as well i made sure that i was enjoying myself so I went to Portugal to see one of my closest friends in November and you know I had the time of my life and I was planning to travel more but you know COVID-19 came and spoiled my market so it's your year of not having education, not having coursework due. I mean there were still commitments I had such as preparing for interviews and stuff but it was the first year for me where I was like there's no coursework deadline because I literally from college I went straight to uni so this was like my break from education so it was the first time I was like Do you know what I know I'm going to be working and earning some money and saving up but I also want to enjoy myself so even if you are getting experience make sure that you're enjoying yourself in the process so from my gap year what did I want to achieve basically I wanted to save money and enjoy myself and the reason was because i had worked like from from basically primary school up until college and then straight from college to university i'd never had a gap year i felt like i'd never had fully had time for myself so i felt like yes i'm going to do my medical school application yes i'm going to work but i also need to find time to do me so with your gap year, you need to consider what do you want to achieve? Are you just leaving college? Do you want to travel? I mean, things are slightly different and unpredictable from COVID-19, but I believe these are still things that you'd want to factor in. Do you want to save up lots of money for when you start uni? Um, so consider your financial situation as well. For the first time, I didn't have homework or coursework to do apart from the application, but I didn't have like this impending deadline or there wasn't always something to work towards so in a way it was really nice and it was relaxing just make sure that within that year you are 
doing something that you want to do as well as relaxing and taking care of yourself that's all important too in a gap year so just make sure that you're making the most of it guys thank you so much for watching this video i really hope it helps when it comes to deciding what to do with your gap year or if you're looking for work experience for your gap year like i said before don't hesitate to leave a comment below if you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to talk about in my future videos guys don't forget to like subscribe and turn your notifications on so you know when my new videos are coming guys all the best and see you soon